The following program contains adult material for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. In the beginning, males and females evolved so that they could come together, mate, and produce offspring. And so we believe that sex has one simple purpose, reproduction. But look closer. These are two females having sex, and these two have formed a homosexual pair bond. These octopuses are both male, and these male dolphins will probably be lifelong sexual partners. This kind of sexual behavior is not going to produce young. Yet, from seals to flies, to date, homosexual behavior has been documented in a few hundred species. Can something that seems to be widespread in nature be dismissed as irrelevant? Or do we need to think again? When we see one animal mounting another, most of us naturally assume that it's a male mounting a female. And scientists have been no different. Most Western scientists were raised on the story of Noah's Ark. To repopulate the world, there must be one male and one female of each species. The importance of reproduction was reinforced by Darwin, the father of evolutionary theory. His work led to the belief that everything an animal did was linked to improving its reproductive success. All the messages were clear. The animal kingdom must be heterosexual. It's not surprising that many early field zoologists who witnessed homosexual behavior chose to ignore it and concentrate on heterosexual sex. In 1892, one report that did document homosexual behavior in elephants carefully protected itself by stating, elephants are committing vices and crimes of sexuality prohibited by the rules of Christianity. What is and what isn't homosexual behavior? One interpretation defines it in animals as genital contact or stimulation, courtship or pair bonding between individuals of the same sex. However, it's a strictly behavioral definition, regardless of motivation or consent. If that's what you see, that's what it is. But while some zoologists chose to ignore homosexual behavior, others were unaware of its existence. Male on top of female? Possibly. You might catch a female laying eggs, but you'd soon lose her in this crowd. It's impossible to tell these penguins apart. In 1922, five king penguins were captured and taken to Edinburgh Zoo. On the basis of their sexual behavior, they were named. After seven years, the zoo finally accepted that something was seriously wrong and got their penguins sexed. Overnight, Andrew became Anne, while the happy couple Eric and Dora became the embarrassing Erica and Dora. The problematic Bertha and Caroline became the equally problematic Bertrand and Charles. So king penguins show some homosexual behavior, and so do the killer whales which share their remote Antarctic home. We know this because we can distinguish the males by their large dorsal fin. Yet as recently as 1980, a US government document removed all references to homosexual behavior from a report on killer whales. Since it was documented by scientists over 200 years ago, the study of homosexual behavior in wildlife has been the science which dare not speak its name. Even now, it's only just beginning to whisper. In the same bay frequented by the killer whales is a colony of elephant seals. 
In the Antarctic summer, they come together to mate and breed. But for more than two-thirds of the year, males and females lead separate lives out at sea. Separation of the sexes was one of the early theories used to explain homosexual behavior. If there were no females available, then males went for second best, another male. But in the breeding season, the males are only interested in heterosexual sex. So much so that they will risk their lives fighting over females. master wins mating rights to all these females. The loser gets nothing. All he can do is take the equivalent of a cold shower. At the end of the breeding season, the beach master and his females head out to sea, but their pups stay behind, waiting to develop their protective blubber. <laughs> They haven't been totally abandoned. The bachelor males are still around. Unfortunately for the pups, these males make terrible babysitters. For the entire season, they've been prevented from mating with the females. Now they take their frustration out on the pups. They're obviously not consenting, but they have no choice. This kind of behavior has been used to suggest that in animals, one partner in any homosexual situation is always non-consenting. But these bulls force themselves on both male and female pups. And in elephant seals, even adult heterosexual behavior can seem aggressive. If we studied only elephant seals, we might conclude that all homosexual behavior in animals is violent and non-consenting. We only have to travel deeper into the Antarctic ice to a colony of leopard seals to find that this is far from the truth. The male leopard seal is a ferocious hunter, and yet males form homosexual pairs which can only be described as gentle and affectionate. They are very tactile creatures, always nuzzling and nibbling each other. These two males, recognizable by the bump on their abdomen, appear to be consenting freely to courtship. After a bout of foreplay, they begin to dance. behavior, known as pair rolling, can last for up to 15 minutes, and often climaxes with the males mounting each other. Leopard seals, like elephant seals, spend much of the year away from female company. Such separations are extremely common in mammals, but cannot account for all homosexual